To je bilo negdje u šestom razredu osnovne škole. I was probably in sixth grade of elementary school when Dominik Ramaj, our local priest, was sentenced. A large detachment of policemen came and they bound him just like Jesus and led him away to jail. They falsely accused him of supposedly having incited people to assassinate the Communist Party secretary. He looked at me with an expression on his face that said, I'm leaving, will I come back? I don't know. And who will take my place? He was sentenced to 14 years hard labor. He looked on just like Jesus. I looked on and knelt, and as they led him away like a common criminal, surrounded by soldiers and policemen, I thought to myself, Jesus, I desire to be your priest, if you will have me. I'm Father Lush Djerji. I was born in Stubla on the 21st of March 1949. It's a mountainous area known as the Karadak region. Although he belongs to a minority church in Kosovo, this Catholic priest has a reputation of importance. He is greatly respected both by the Muslim majority and by Catholics. People flock to him on the street and in church wanting to greet him and seek his advice. He encourages, advises and attends to one and all in equal measure. Behind everything he does is an interior drive to honour the example of his forefathers. The idea that challenges me, but which brings hardship to and great satisfaction with it, is to be a successor worthy of our forefathers, the bishops, priests and religious, who are the only light in the centuries of darkness. They left an indelible mark on the culture, civilization, identity and language of the Albanian people. That was a challenge to me, whether I would be able to contribute to write something in the service both to God and to my people and towards mankind without any digression on the creed, nation or culture, the way that Mother Teresa did. I'm very proud of that. Every day that pride, that zeal and that genuine joy is amplified in me. This strong desire to serve God in Kosovo was vital, especially upon his return from studies in Rome. Having successfully defended his doctoral thesis, Father Lush returned to a depleted and spent local church. Coming from Rome, of course, the misery of Kosovo struck me. We were lacking priests. They were all elderly and exhausted from communist imprisonment. That new blood, the three new priests, there were two others before me in 1972, delighted people and inspired many new vocations. That's when the rebirth of our church began and of the whole diocese which up to then was hardly known. Few people knew of the existence of these Albanians who claimed to be Catholics. That anonymity was caused by over 300 years of forced Islamization. To survive, Catholics were obliged to seek refuge here, in the rugged hillsides on the outskirts of Kravasaria. It 
It was there, living in misery and poverty, that the Kosovan Albanians protected the seed of faith in their families up to the present day. It is from one such family that Father Luš Djerji descends. His brother, Noé, also a priest, still remembers their childhood together. He was three and I was six when our father died. My mother fed us and schooled us, along with my older brother and the other members of the family who supported us in everything. When the three of us, two brothers and another cousin, were ordained and held our first mass, that was really something, not just for ourselves, but for the parish and the diocese. On the long winter nights, their mother would tell them stories about their ancestors. One memory in particular was influential in the life decision of the two Djerji brothers. In the 19th century, 17 chiefs of the Albanian Catholic villages of Varnoakolo, Binac, Terzia, Stubla, together with their priest, Father Ante Marovic, came to the local Begovian center in Gnilane, looking for permission to publicly state their Catholic identity. Bey Dinolia, the local Turkish administrator, imprisoned them together with their parish priest shackling them in chains weighing 50 kilos and sent them on foot to the Turkish governor in Pristina, Yadar Pasha. Many of them died along the way and their bodies were thrown to the dogs. They didn't even permit them a burial. Those who by some miracle survived the march were taken out to sea to be tortured and to utterly break them. Wishing to make an example of them to all, Yadar Pasha too tortured them and marched them through Thessaloniki all the way to Anatolia, together with the members of their family. Many of those still remaining didn't survive the journey. Once there, the Ottoman authorities placed them in the swamplands of Mohalic, where those few Catholics who had survived began to die of malaria. On hearing of this, European ambassadors exerted pressure on the Sultan, and in the end, the Turkish authorities allowed the last 79 remaining survivors to return to their homeland. We are descendants of those Catholic Albanians. There are about 10,000 of us today. They are the main source of our vocations, priests and religious. From that region comes our bishop, Monsignor Don Gergi, and most of our clerics, priests and religious. The martyrs are the seeds of the new Christians, in our case of new priests, nuns and religious vocations. Dr. Yahya Drancholi, professor of history at the University of Pristina, sees Father Lush not just as a man of faith, but also a great humanist. They have cooperated on many projects, and from this, a mutual respect and friendship has arisen.